Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jason with Jadron Aquatics. Thanks for hanging out with me in the wild again. So today we are at a, a creek. Um, it's in Frisco, but most people are just gonna call it Dallas. And we are searching for the elusive uh, killifish. Uh, well, it's not really elusive. It's just very fast and hard to catch. Um, so there's a lot of other minnows and stuff in here we're catching. So we are going to continue on and I will show you guys some cool footage of this beautiful place and then show you some of the cool fish we caught. Okay. In the riverbed, yeah, it doesn't matter. Probably not very much. Because it's going to get rolled the next time it rains really hard, but it's going to have a good Doesn't Texas only have like three or four different types? Oh no. Really? I'll show you my book. There's a, there's a list of shiners, depending on where you're at. Now I'm talking about just in the DFW area. Yeah. That limits the number down quite a bit. There's probably five or six. Oh, okay. You have the state, there's a nice list of them. Oh, uh, okay. Fish. I look at pictures and it looks like... It's just like look like the fish. same fish? But the problem is you're seeing a lot of preserved specimens. Yeah. And you lose a lot of colors, and if there is any color, a like golden top minnow. You look in that book, that looks like a pretty bling. You know, why would anybody want to try to catch this? And then yeah. you catch one, you're going like, holy cow, this is a cool looking fish. <laughs> I didn't know it was the first one I caught. I had no idea. And so I had to ask the other naturalist, and he's like, oh yeah, those are top minnows. And I looked up top minnow, and I was like, oh yeah. But don't look at anything like the big show. So I say, you can pull all the fish in there. We're all up to the fish These toad eggs here. Just a whole slimy string of them. You can even see them moving in there. You think that's from one toad? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> There they are, right there. I just go up. Got a, uh, some what do you call it? Okay, what we have here, this is a uh, plains killifish. Now, this is the main reason that we came to this creek today. Um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Mark called me and said, "Hey, are you interested in going out tomorrow?" And he goes, "I know it's last minute." And then he tells me where it is, and it's only about an hour from my house, but I know it's about two hours from his house. So I'm kind of curious the next day, next day to ask him, like, why in the world are we going all the way out two hours from your house? Well, it was specifically for this fish. Um, Mark does a tremendous amount of research when he goes out, and he has a book of a bunch of native uh, Texas fish, and he has a list of fish that he's looking to get. And this is one of the ones that is on his list. And so he not only has done a lot of research, but he gets on Google Maps and looks down on the satellite shots and tries to find uh, the right type of creeks because this type of fish only exists uh, in creeks that are, have a hard bottom to them. Uh, then he also had a friend uh, that lived in the Frisco area where we end up getting this fish. And he asked her about some of the creeks that were around there. Well, she volunteered to go out and actually look for it. 
So she actually went out into the creek uh, yesterday, and uh, she, I don't think she actually caught one of these, but she said she saw some fish that she didn't recognize. So that's what got us out here specifically for this fish. And now I was only able to get a couple of them. I think he got about 10 of them, including one uh, female that was absolutely full of eggs. So he's obviously gonna work on trying to uh, breed these things. But as you can see, it's just a, just a beautiful fish. Um, it's just kind of weird to me um, because, you know, this is all kind of new to me to think that, the, you know, there's a killifish uh, that's in Texas. Well, apparently there's like killifish everywhere. You know, I know the killifish as in the tropical ones you see, just all types of beautiful colors. So you don't expect um, to find one locally. So if you guys are ever interested, man, you should go out into your local creeks and do some research and stuff. There's probably some beautiful fish you didn't even know about. All right, here's, here's, here's a big school. God, oh, they turned like at the last second. <laughs> like 50 of them just turned at the last second. Do it again, go through the same area because it's piled up and I can't see my net. Crap, I got it. I roll it that way. Here they come, here they come, here they come. Oh man, they're just too small. Yeah, they're pretty small. Man. And that's not that tiny. They're big, is it? Oh, here's here's about fifty of them again. That's what I'm saying. Here, okay, ready, Mark? Oh, no, 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 no. Hang on. Let me get up a little further. Stop, stop, stop. They're right. There's so many of them. They don't like that black. Can you get it any flatter in the water? There? Here they are again. There's so many of them. You come down, grab the end of my neck and pick up, because I can't pick that end up when you can sign it. All right. Just rush in and grab the end of it. Pick it up. I didn't even see any Man, there's going. no point trying anymore. <laughs> Oh, I got one. Oh, you got a couple. That's a shiner. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, that's a, it's one of those shiners. That's what that school that we're chasing was. <laughs> All right, so we caught us a group of uh, red shiners. Uh, you can see the males are the ones with the beautiful coloring. Uh, like that's their breeding colors they get into. And those guys just look absolutely beautiful. I'm surprised more people don't have their these in their aquariums because they're just so beautiful. And then you can see the females are just kind of a silver colored. Um, we went ahead and built kind of a pond system out in the backyard now. Um, I'll have a video on that later. Um, I just don't have the tank size inside uh, my fish room for what these guys really need because they're just incredibly active. So I'm going to go ahead and get those uh, moved out there. Those, their turquoise fins look gorgeous. Stunning fish in them. The problem is, they get big, they hide a lot, and they eat a lot. <laughs> So you don't really see them much. You tear your tank up, and they eat plants too. Yeah, they're not made to be kept in an aquarium. They're kind of like a cichlid. In a lot of ways, they are. Very, very well, cool. they are a cichlid. Yeah, I've looked that up. I'm trying to figure out, you know, how far you got to go up before that comes together. It's pretty far up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're considered cichlids, though. I used to, too. I started looking it up, trying to figure out. I can't verify that. Uh, kind of like yeah, at a certain point, everything comes together. Oh, they're like, oh man. We're trapped. Then they start going fast. They're coming right at you. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got it. I got one too. Yeah. You want to keep them? Yeah. Guppy grass? 
Uh huh. There's some kind of aquatic plant here, we're not I sure if it's, it's just roots with the uh, Yeah, that's what it looks it does look like roots. Alright, here we have a, a group of uh, black line top minnows. Uh, this is another one that's uh, fairly common in most the uh, creeks and, and rivers around this area. Another just beautiful fish with just the, the, that beautiful black line going all the way through its body and all the way through its eye. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous minnow. This one's a, a lot more docile of a fish other than the shiners. The shiners are kind of crazy and just kind of just go nuts and go everywhere. These guys just kind of hang out at the top of the water and just kind of relax.